Hi everyone, I am Ludovic Métivier, researcher at University Grenoble Alps and CNRS in France. I am going to present you a work on full waveform inversion, specifically on the use of an optimal transport distance to define the misfit function in a full waveform inversion framework. This is uh, uh, the outline of my presentation. I will give basic concepts first on optimal transport to motivate its use for full waveform inversion. Then I will present the strategy we have designed for a first implementation of an optimal transport distance for full waveform inversion. This will be illustrated by two applications, and I will end with conclusion and perspectives on this work. So, FWI is based on the minimization of the misfit between observed and calculated data over a set of subsurface parameters. So what we try to do is to find the subsurface parameters which give the best fit between observed and calculated data. This fit is often done in a least square sense, and the subsurface parameter we are mostly interested in is the wave velocity. So interesting to note is that meso to macro scale variation of this parameter are mostly responsible for shifting in time the seismic data. So if we reason in an inverse problem uh, way of thinking, this means that recovering these velocity perturbations needs to properly interpret this time shift. This is complicating using a least square misfit. This is represented here on this figure, where we schematically represent the data as a signal signal if the predicted data is shifting from the observed data by more than half a period, then minimizing the misfit in the least square sense amounts to fit the observed data with one to several phase shifts. This is what is referred to as the cycle skipping or phase ambiguity issue in the FWI community. To illustrate this, we consider in this example two recur signals in solid and dotted lines. The dotted line recur is shifted in time from the original solid line recur. And we plot the least squares misfit between these two recur, depending on the time shift. We see that the corresponding misfit function has a global minimum at zero time shift, and also two secondary minima close for minus two and two second time shift. This is a very simple illustration of cycle skipping. The misfit function has local minima in which we will converge if the initial prediction is too far from the observation. Now, a few words about optimal transport. So optimal transport can be seen as an optimal assignment problem. Here we consider the mapping of a distribution P onto a distribution Q. For simplicity, we might have in mind that P corresponds to a distribution of sand piles that need to be displaced to fill in the uh, whole distribution Q. On this figure, the assignment which is proposed consists in splitting the five sand units of P1 into three units to move to Q1 and two units to move to Q3. The single unit of P2 is moved to Q4, while the two units from P3 are moved to Q2. This assignment is rep represented through the matrix gamma, such that each entry of gamma ij tells how much units from pi should be displaced to qj. For instance, on the first row, we see that p1 is split to q1 with three units and q3 with two units. The matrix gamma is called the transport plan. There is an infinity of such transport plan. So the optimal transport problem consists in finding the one that minimizes a given transportation cost. This cost is computed as the sum of the elementary masses which are displaced, multiplied by the distance along which they are displaced. This is the sense of the cost function we see in equation two. Each gamma ij is multiplied by a distance, um, by a measure of the distance, sorry, between the original point where is located pi, denoted by xi, and the target point where is located qj, denoted by xj. This distance is called the ground distance and is often chosen as an Euclidean distance. The linear constraints we see are here only to ensure that the matrix gamma is a transport plane. It is easy to show that for this, we simply uh, need to ensure that the sum of the elements of the row i is equal to the initial distribution pi while the sum of the elements of the column j is equal to the target distribution qj. 
So why is that interesting for a full waveform inversion? The reason is optimal uh, transport problem defines a distance between distributions which is convex with respect to shifts. So if we go back to the example of the two recurves, we are going to consider that the distribution we compare come now from the discretization in time of these recurve functions. And in a paper of 2014, Enquist and Frosser have shown that based on an optimal transport distance, it is possible to derive a misfit function which is almost quadratic with respect to the time shifts between the recurves, as illustrated here. This means that we can expect from optimal transport a much more robust behavior with respect to cycle skipping, and this is the main motivation for using it within the framework of full waveform inversion. So now we go to uh, the strategy we have designed. It is not straightforward to apply to realistic data. The optimal transport problem is well posed only for comparing positive quantities with the same total mass. Uh, it is a mass conservation assumption. So we see here that uh, we have a short gather computed on the Marmosi model, which breaks completely the positivity assumption because the seismic data is oscillatory as can be seen through the alternance of black and white on the shot gas. On the other hand, the mass conservation assumptions uh, should be satisfied because this amounts to the sum of the integral in time of each trace. And because the zero frequency of the signal is zero, the total mass of the se seismic data is zero. Now we face a second difficulty, which is related to the numerical solution of the optimal transport problem itself. The complexity of exact solvers in terms of the number of discrete data points is in n square at best, and we know that for real realistic size 2D or 3D data, this is a complexity which is not affordable. We just need efficient strategies for computing or approximating the solution of the optimal transport problem. Based on these two difficulties, we came up uh, with the following strategy. We consider a particular instance of the optimal transport distance, named Wasserstein 1 distance, with a particular ground cost, which is the L1 ground cost. The choice of the Wasserstein 1 distance is made because its dual formulation has the good property to be able to deal with non-positive data. The choice of the L1 ground distance is made to reduce the computational cost, as I will explain in the next slide. The dual form of the Wasserstein 1 distance amounts to solve a maximization problem over a set of Lipschitz functions phi, where the criterion to maximize is the sum for each point of the data space of the value of this function phi multiplied by the residuals at this point. We now consider a discretization of this problem for 3D shot gases. Now the index n will represent the time axis while the indexes i and j will represent the spatial position of a receiver at the surface. The total number of discrete points is n, which is equal to product nt times nx times ni. In this case, the Lipschitz constraints amounts to the definition of n square constraints, leading to algorithm with complexity at least in n square. Now we are going to use a property of the L1 distance. Because of the choice we have made, the Lipschitz constraints are expressed in terms of this L1 distance. And we can show, in this case, that the set of n square constraints we have are actually equivalent to a set of 3n local constraints. This is due to a simple Manhattan property of the L1 distance, but this opens the possibility to design much more efficient algorithms in this case. We can then reformulate or simplify the linear programming problem into a convex non-smooth optimization problem. We solve it through a proximal splitting strategy named SDMM for simultaneous direction method of multipliers. I do not give the details here. Please refer to the review paper of Combets and Peke in 2011. The important things to note is that this algorithm has good convergence properties and it requires the solution of a linear system at each iteration. We have been able to prove that this linear system is actually equivalent to a discretization of the Dirichlet operator with homogeneous Neumann boundary conditions. 
for which efficient solvers can be used, either relying on the fast Fourier transform with quasi-linear complexity, or multigrid techniques with linear complexity. Now that we have an efficient strategy to compute an optimal transport distance that we can apply to seismic data, we need to be able to compute the gradient of the corresponding misfit function, as it is the key ingredient to perform full waveform inversion. Following the adjoint state approach, we know that the gradient is expressed as the correlation between the second order derivatives in time of the incident wave field P and an adjoint wave field lambda, which is the solution of the wave propagation problem backward in time, with a source term which is equal to the residuals in case we use the least square distance. Using our optimal transport distance, the only things to be modified to compute its gradient is this source term. In this case, it becomes equal to the function phi bar. This phi bar is actually the solution itself of the optimal transport problem, also called R max of the maximization problem. And in other words, we need only to solve one transport problem per full waveform inversion iteration. The value of the criterion at the optimum gives the misfit function, while the function phi, which achieves this optimum, gives the source term of the adjoint weight field we need to backpropagate to compute the gradient. Now, if we come back to the initial example we had on the shifted in time record signal, this is uh, what we obtain. In black, the L2 misfit depending on the time shift in red and sorry, in red, the optimal transport misfit depending on the time shift. So we can see that we recover a single minimum, even if it seems that we lose the convexity at the minimum. It seems not differentiable and close from an L1 misfit function. Now we can move to uh, two applications of this optimal transport distance. The first uh, case study we are going to consider is based on the Marmousi model with an acquisition at the surface and uh, an acoustic approximation for the computation of the uh, synthetic data. We consider two initial models. One is close from the true one and another much less close. Starting from the first one, both the least squares and optimal transport approaches converge towards a reliable estimation of the true model. Starting from the second one, only using the optimal transport approach, a reliable estimation is computed. So the least squares approach is locked into a meaningless local minimum in this case. This is a closer view of this uh, least square estimation, where we can see that we do not recover the feature of the exact model. Now, this is a closer view of the optimal transport estimation. We see that despite low velocity and high velocity artifacts on the edges, the quality of the reconstruction is much better than in the least squares case. Now we consider an application to the Chevron 2014 benchmark dataset, for which we do not know the exact model. We present here three short scatters associated with increasing frequency bands. The signal over noise ratio is poorer at low frequency. The data is synthetic, but it is built using an elastic modeling engine and we invert it in the acoustic approximation. The starting model is a 1D model, except for the bathymetry. It is provided by Chevron. The important feature is the velocity inversion layer near 3 km depth. The short offset of the acquisitions makes this case study challenging, as diving waves only sample the shallow part of the model. We implement a hierarchical frequency strategy from low to high frequencies, and we use our optimal transport approach. And these are the results we obtained for the first frequency band at 4 Hz. These are the results we have at 10 Hz, at 16 Hz, and finally at 25 Hz. So it seems that we have been able to recover the major features of the model, we have low velocity anomalies in the shallow part, high velocity bodies in the first layer. We recover also the velocity inversion layer below and the curved interface at depth. As a quality control, we display here a reference shot gather with the corresponding calculated gather in the final model on both sides, 
one being mirrored just to assess the matching of the data at short and near offset. As you can see, this matching is quite good, indicating a good explanation of the data. As a comparison, we use the same workflow with the least squares misfit function. And as you can see, already at 10 Hz, we have converged towards a local minimum. It is time now to conclude. What we can say is that we know that the least squares approach is not robust for cycle skipping. Optimal transport approach might be a solution to mitigate this issue. We propose an implementation which is based on a particular instance of an optimal transport distance, which is the Wasserstein 1 distance, with the L1 ground cost. This allows to handle non-positive data and to derive an efficient numerical algorithm to approximate the solution of the underlying transport problem. We show convincing results on two 2D synthetic applications. Now, numerous questions remain open. First, we would like to apply this in 3D and to real datasets. And why not for multi-parameter inversion? Second, we are still interested in applying other optimal transport distances, such as the Wasserstein 2 distance. But for this, we need to have a strategy allowing to consider non-positive data, which could be based, for instance, on nonlinear transform of the data. For the computation of the optimal transport distance, we are uh, thinking using anthropic regularization techniques or other type of transport formulation. This is ongoing work and there is still a lot to do. Thank you for your attention. You can like and share this video. For more e-lectures, take a look at the e-lecture playlist.